Every experiment aboard the International Space Station started off as just an idea, and now your ideas can become real-life experiments up in space, too. Today, I'm at NASA's Ames Research Center to talk with Dr. Sylvain Cost about GeneLab and the many different types of genetic data that we get from the ISS. Getting sample from the space is still something pretty rare. Whatever comes back, you want to get everything you can out of it and study it in every direction you can. My name is Sylvain Coste. Um, I'm the project manager for Gene Lab and I'm also a principal investigator at NASA Ames Research Center. Omics is very attractive because it requires only a little bit of RNA or DNA and or protein and so you don't need a lot of tissue to do these omics typically and it's getting even better now and you can get tons of interesting information so you can get a sense of what is changing in space in a living entity and try to understand why and and even try to understand how you can then block it so for instance if you see something that is negatively impacting someone. Um, changes in the muscle is a, is a well-known feature because uh, you don't have gravity, and so the muscle is, uh, you're going through some kind of atrophy of the muscle. And that goes along with um, a molecular signature. Uh, once we find the molecular si signature, we can maybe find ways to um, find a drug that can mitigate this uh, uh, response uh, in some fashion. So GeneLab is the unique, uh, database in the world right now that has been collecting all the different kind of omics from samples that are flown in space or from samples that have relevance to space. So we go from micro plants to mice uh, and drosophila and small animals. So we cover the full spectrum. And so we're putting it all together to get a better idea of what, what are the molecular changes happening in space in all these different entities and species. And let's say you have an expert in um, osteoporosis. So classic disease, it, women are very, uh, uh, they, they tend to be more vulnerable to osteoporosis because once they go through menopause, uh, their uptake of calcium is lower and so you have all these disease uh, related to the bone loss, okay. Therefore, there are drugs out there that are trying to counteract this, right? So let's say you're an expert in osteoporosis and you go into gene lab database and you see your classic signatures of osteoporosis, like, oh, this is classic. And actually, you have a drug that's actually perfect for that. You would first try it on mice, of course, and show that it is, um, it is helping. But eventually, this could make its way to the human, especially if it's a drug that's already FDA approved on Earth. There's no reason you can't give it to astronauts. So that would be a perfect story for helping out our astronauts. So science is a tough business. Um, I would say, I remember my mentor when I was doing my PhD, she always told me, you know, science is about delayed gratification. So you have to be very patient, therefore very passionate. If you're willing to do all this stuff, then, then you're gonna be exposed to something amazing uh, because you are joining the team of people who are trying to decipher how nature works. By entering the Genes in Space contest, your experiments, designed to test questions about life in space and astrobiology, can be sent to the ISS from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Go to genesinspace.org to find out more about how to turn your ideas into real-life experiments up in space.